you run to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abba brings you God's word with deep insight and power. God bless you. This year is a year of visions and uh, we want to recapture one of the major drivers of anything at all. doesn't matter what it is that you want to build. Once you have this technology, you will build the greatest thing in the world. It doesn't matter your current level. It doesn't matter your current disposition. It doesn't matter your current whatever. Because as I look into what God is doing in the end time, I see that it's going to require more than just doing church to finish the tax that is remaining. God gave us vision as a vehicle to save people. God gave us vision as a vehicle to deliver people and not just that, to make people better also. Anywhere you see people suffering, anywhere you see people going through problems, going through crisis, the missing thing is actually vision because that is what God uses to better the lot of people. Nothing answers the cry of people like vision. Nothing. The nothing changes the destiny and the situations of people like vision. This is going to be the subject for this whole period because it can do... God is going to help me because we have a lot to deal with. This cannot finish today. There are many other... You know, we're going to see how we can make it a series, make it a series so that we can finish it up. And then what I'm dealing here now is a new book I'm putting up together. How to build a great vision. Look around the world, see what men have built. You will see it all rises and falls on vision. Anywhere you've seen people making progress, nothing is responsible. Vision. Nothing else is vision. Anywhere you see people who have achieved their destinies, achieved their dreams, achieved great goals, achieved great whatever, great feet and great heights. Vision has always been the key. Now the problem that we have in today's world, especially in the church of today, is that people have lost touch with what God, how God, you know, you know, with how God builds. People think they they can build on their own. Hmm. People think they can do anything on their own. But it doesn't work like that. God, <laughs> God who is even supreme, who is even sovereign, who is all powerful, is omnipotent. That's all God all powerful. He's omnipresent. That's God who is everywhere. There is omniscience. That's God who is all knowing. Even with all those great attributes that he has, he does not, he does not achieve anything without vision. You're going to see the nature of vision as we go on in this series. It's part of the things you're going to see. What's the nature of vision? How does vision really... <laughs> You're going to be saying what vision really is. What is vision? You know, vision is simply direction. Vision is simply a picture of a preferred future. It's simply the picture of a preferred destination. That's what vision is.
when God gives people vision, that means he can now take them from where they used to be into where they ought to be. Is that Genesis chapter 11? I really didn't want to read that, but I'm feeling led to put it up. Genesis 11. Let's see. You know, chapter 11, verse 1. Uh, and the whole earth was one word language and what one speech. Verse 2. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found the plain in the land of Shina and they dwelt there. Yes, the next one now. And they said one toward another. Go to. Let us make what? Brick. And burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. The next verse. And they said, go to, let us do what now? Build us a city and a what? And a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. What is that thing that makes people have great name? What is that thing that makes people have great fame? What is that thing that makes people have great impact? What is that thing that ensures that people are not scattered abroad on the face of the earth? It is called vision. What is that thing that can make an obscure person, that can make a person who would never have amounted to anything in this world, finally amount to something? It is called vision. What is that thing that will end up making a person who has no direction, who has no whatever, even a person who has no destiny, if you want to even use that one. When I go further on this teaching, you will now see it. If you want greatness, I'm showing you the key. That's what we want to do the whole of this year. With everything God has at his disposal all the power all the knowledge all the wisdom everything he has he still requires vision and when you talk about this subject of vision it has nothing to do with a person it has everything to do with people vision is not for it's not ambition it's not it's not something you it's not my goal my dream my this that's not it vision is corporate vision is people <laughs> show them you know uh, of course if you read this down you will see that these guys actually got on that job even God okay read a little bit further let's see you need to understand what I'm trying to say here then after that I show you something else And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. The children of men. Hello. Look at what men decided to do. Look at even the next one. See the next verse. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is what? One. You now see that vision is about people. And then vision is about people coming together in agreement, in unity to get a job done. Vision is not about how many whatever. It's not about oh. Mm. As I'm talking that, some things are running into my head and then God help me. Mm.
Okay. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. And the, when, when we get down on this series, you start seeing some of those principles of vision. Because the first one I'm going to show you is, you know, I'll just deal with one because of time. There may be, uh, subsequently we'll deal with it. There are about 12 of those principles I'm going to show you, but not today. We're doing them one after the other. Because one alone, if I take on one and d- d- you see that there's a lot in it. If this means you understand this thing this year, you're going to go all over the world. There's something that has ability than ability. Vision is that. There's something that has ability, that has power more than your potentials. Something that has power more than what you think you know. Something that has ability more than ability is vision. A man who has too much of talent, ability, who does not know how to cooperate, who does not know how to form synergy, who does not know how to form unity to achieve a vision, will die achieving nothing. Then a man who does not have power by simply coming in unison, simply coming in partnership, coming together with people who have, you know, accepted a vision for their life, will do much more and achieve much more than a man who has all the power in the world. Vision actually is power. You don't need to have power. All you need is come together, have a vision. You have more power than the most powerful man in the world who is standing alone. If you want to understand the power of vision, go and study your broom in the house. When you go home, just pick your broom and then you understand. Take one stick out of a broom. Try to sweep your room. Let's see what happens. But bring those sticks of broom together and bound them. What it will do in your compound will amaze you. Just that same one broom bound together. That's what he said. People is. He didn't say ah. Is. Do you say people is? It should be people are. Why do you say people is? Because what bounds people as one is vision. You see that word is. Vision is singular, but it deals with plurality. Is is people. It, 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 that thing that makes people one is vision. That's is vision. That's why the opposite of vision is division. Division is simply division. Division is two vision. And whenever there's division, there's diversion. Division is when you begin to see something contrary to what is casted. When you begin to see something contrary to the original plan, to the original vision, you're going to see that as great as this work was, it got to a point it stopped. Because the people began to lose sight of the real thing, of the main thing that they once saw. Anywhere the devil see people casting vision, he is afraid. Which is why he now brings the vision, which is the opposite of vision, to counter what God is trying to do. Because nothing renders the devil as useless as vision. Nothing stops his work as vision. Nothing renders his activity on the earth useless as vision. Nothing gives birth to greatness like vision. If you want to turn feeble men into mighty men, just move them into a vision. That's all it takes. Give them a vision. And then if they understand the techniques which I'm going to be showing you, because we're going to be dealing with those techniques and principles. If they understand those principles, wow! Show me where these guys had to fast and pray to build this thing. All they needed was agreement. <laughs> All they needed was cooperation. All they needed was to understand how this thing is done. They knew that this thing we are building is not for, is going to end up profiting every one of us. Go back to the other, go back to verse, you know, verse 5. See what they said. Let me, let me show you because when the book comes out, you're going to pick it and you're going to see that there are benefits of this thing. This year we are going to be doing all kinds of crazy things. What I'm going to be showing you will blow your mind. We're not going to be running in circle. It's time to show you that church is vision. It's time to show you that what we are doing here is not religious. We are building a tower. But this tower is not just going to be going vertical. It's also going to be going horizontal. It's a movement. It's not just a monument. 
it's not just a vertical thing. It's going to have a great height, but it's going to have a great width. It's going to have a great. It's going to be horizontal because it's going to spread all over the world. What makes people powerful? You see, vision. What can make a whole nation quick is vision. People coming together to agree to do a thing. Do you know these whole states you see like this can be brought down to a standstill by what you call okay, let me give you an example. Student union government. Hmm? If one student of your university here, those of you in school, goes to the government house now with a placard all it takes is one cobra to come out from the pool, catch him and go and put him in the cell. If the whole students come down under the auspices of student union government and they come out in mass and lead a protest to government house, no army will fire a gun. The governor himself will come out to find out what these guys are here to talk about. Go there as one man, they will break you into pieces. That's how you can easily break a broom, a broomstick, with ease. Bring the broomstick into one band. You can't break it. Have you tried breaking a broom that is bound together? You are wasting your time. You are wasting your time. People who don't understand this dimension, this thing called vision, who are running health together, taking off in their own lane, they think they are busy. You are busy going nowhere. Activity is not equal to productivity. You can be building bricks thinking you're building something. Just running one stupid routine you're running. You're, you're there. You, eh, eh, that's not what God wants in 2020. If you want to be a low ranger this year, Check the previous part of your life. You will see that you have been struggling to make progress because of that low ranger spirit. You want to do it your own way. You want to be on your own. You don't want to cooperate. You don't want anybody to disturb you. You want to be on You are going to die too small, sir. There are more gifted people than Sinat. Sinat is not gifted, but she's lifted because of vision. It's not gifting that lifts people up. Is coming together as one army and seeing that uh, okay, and the Lord came down to see the city. And okay, no, go back to verse 4 because I need to. Time is my constraint now. Please push this thing to verse 4. And they said, Go, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad. Without vision, people are scattered. Without vision, people are, are like bones that are, you know, that Ezekiel's dried bones. Scattered everywhere, you know, completely out of joint. They could be carrying great abilities. They could be carrying great potentials. They could be carrying great calling. They could be carrying great assignment. They could be carrying great abilities inside of them. And great capabilities inside of them. But they will be scattered abroad. These men perhaps are men. Okay, let me even show you. So you think that these men are, you, maybe you think they are nobody. These are people with great abilities. Because it even takes ability to build that thing they were building. Somebody may have been building the block, another person may be building the paint, painting, some other person may be laying the woods, the roof, another person may be doing the plumbing job, another person may be doing the you know roofing job. These are people with great abilities, but the plumber no, I can't build a house, I don't have ability to build a roof. Let me supply my own plumbing parts. Where the guy who does the brick lay supplies his own brick laying parts, the other person who does the roofing supplies his own roofing parts, the other person who does aluminium job supplies his own aluminium part where we now bring our diverse abilities together we build one great house but if i say i'm a plumber i don't need a guy who does a messing job am i going to live in a plumber in a plumbing whatever How, have you seen a plumber that build a house entirely a house cannot be all plumber i'm a frank edwards i can't preach like pastor chris preaches 
But I need Pastor Chris to be able to give the word my music. So what do I do? Bring what I have, I know how to do. I'm coming to agreement with this man who has a platform. And use that thing to service that vision. As I do that stuff, that thing I'm carrying gains expression. The world can celebrate it. But you say, I don't need that platform. What are they even talking about? I can sing. You will sing and die singing in your toilet. That's where you will sing and die. With your gifted voice, nobody will hear you in the world. So they said, we have abilities. We have capability. We have what it takes to build. We have what it takes to, you know, we have all the potentials and talent and all that. But the only way all those things will find expression is by coming together to now build. Because if we do not do that, what will happen? We will be scattered abroad on the surface or the face of the earth. Verse 5. And the Lord came down to see the city. God himself came down. He didn't send a representative. God himself came down. He said to see the city which the children of men builded. And then see the next verse which is very terrifying. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one and they have all one language. The language is not English. The language is not French. They have all one language. What that means is that what they are talking about is one thing. What they are seeing is one thing. What they are pursuing is one thing. They have agreed on one thing. That's one language. What do we want to build as a ministry? If everybody understands it and pursues that one thing, if we all say we are heading in the north, everybody understands that we are heading in the north. Nobody is seeing that we are heading in the east. Everybody sees us heading northwest. That's the one language we are talking about. <laughs> I want to show you what has made the most powerful people you see in the world. And most of them are not even Christians. What has made the most powerful guys? Most of them are not as holy as you guys are. The individuality spirit is the greatest robber of destiny, I know. The greatest robber is the greatest destroyer of great people, I know. The individuality spirits. The one man show spirit. The my thing, my thing spirit. The I have my own thing, you know. That is the greatest destroyer. My job this year is to change your psyche, your perception about church. You see, this ministry is not church, it's a vision. Because only vision has the capacity of altering people's situations. Of altering people's that you can come in here a nobody and end up becoming a somebody. That's what we're telling you here. It's not a church team. It's not where we come to clap hands and sing and pray and go home. That's not it. That's why some of you played with the team, some, you know, like even last year. That's why I'm trying to help you even this first day of the year. When you understand this thing, nobody will push you around again. When you see that what you are building, you're not building for one man. You're building for us. Let us build for ourselves a tower. Lest we be scattered on the surface of the earth. When God gives a vision to a man, he didn't give that man that vision for himself. He gives that man that vision for a people who will be scattered if they don't accept it. Now 
now see God's statement. And this they begin to do. He now say, and now. He said, and now. He didn't say tomorrow. He said, now. What it means is, if you decide and now we are going to build those universities, it will happen now. It's not tomorrow. If you decide and now we'll start flying these nations we're talking about, he said, and now. The day people agree is the day the thing begins. The miracle of greatness begins automatically. Achieving a great vision does not require forever. Does it require too many years? <laughs> After when God brought Egypt, Moses, and you know, took uh, Egypt, took Israel out of Egypt, the journey was meant to last for forty days into Canaan. Now, I think that's what it should have, it should have been. It's 40 days. And the journey ended up taking how many years? 40 years. Hmm? Was it God's fault? No. The people delayed themselves. Anything that is taking time is something people have not agreed to do. It's not a big issue. God said, and now nothing will be restrained. This is what is needed to change even Nigeria vision. That's why you will see this here now. Don't worry. So the Lord said, and now nothing will be restrained from them. He said, nothing. Even we who is divinity, we are helpless. We can't. Nothing. He said, nothing. This is God talking. He said, nothing. He said, nothing. Nothing. Because these guys understand it. What they understand is that dimension of coming together, that synergy thing cooperation thing, coming together to build. And as long as they know that thing and they have mastered it, he said, nothing. Whatever these people want to become, nothing. Nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Because vision first is about conceiving. It's about being able to see. Now, you see, as I speak, one of the things that will be happening to you is pictures will be entering your mind. Flashes of images. So that you will be able to now see that ah, what we are doing here is no waste of time. You 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 start seeing that greatness we are talking about, because until you see it, you won't pursue it. No matter how I talk and talk, until these words are converted into pictures, until these words are converted into images in your brain, in your mind, you begin to see what we are capable of becoming. You you begin to see what we are capable of doing in this generation. The places Kaliba para tatayata. The places we are capable of going in this world. That there's no limit. The world is our parish. This whole world is our parish. No limit. If you don't see this thing, a man they are still begging to leave jam and come and jam destiny. He doesn't know. A man you are begging to leave small and then pursue greatness. I have not seen anything. A man you are telling leave travel for Christmas and settle down. Let's do this. He has not seen anything. What you give up is a function of what you have taken up. Peter will not give up his boat. Will not give up his net. Will not give up fishing until he has seen something bigger. What you give up? Somebody said, hey, you gave up your business to follow this thing. The person doesn't understand what you have seen. Somebody is telling me, like me who gave up lecturing. They wanted me to be. Give up all kinds of banking. Give up all kinds of things. People who are looking for it are wondering. See what I'm looking for? You are giving it up. Because that thing you're looking for, I'm giving up, is your whatever. That's all your eyes can see. You mean I've seen bigger than that thing? I've seen beyond that realm. You don't understand it. That's why you're conflicting with me. That's why you're going around talking nonsense. That's why you're saying we are confused. Because you don't know what I've seen. You, you're seeing a lecture hall where you can come and teach students. I'm seeing the entire world. I'm seeing the whole world as my lecture theater. You, a classroom is where you end, where you see, yeah, I'm okay with a classroom teacher, drive Camry, that's all. Me, I'm seeing the whole world. United Nations is my classroom. 
African Union is my classroom. United States Congress, my classroom, that's my parish. And because I have seen that, I can give up anything to lay hold on it. The kingdom of God is like a treasure hidden in a field. When men find it, you know what they do? They go it away and sell it every other thing. And what they are selling could be what others are trusting God to buy. They sell it every other thing. And in doing it, people will say, you've lost your mind. But that's what it takes. Because, of course, vision is mental picture. There's something that will enter your head that will make that your mind of mediocrity. It will make you lose certain kind of... I don't understand. To damage some things in your brain and then people will say you have gone color. Admission can't give you a future. Only vision will. Matriculation and convocation won't give you a future. If it could, then all the people who had gone to school should have been doing great. When I go to school, when I go to take a professional course and all that, I'm, that, I'm not looking for a future with that. I'm only using that as a tool to build myself for the future. That's all. It's not for anything else. All those courses I take, all those degrees and all that, it's not for, for anything. It's just to help me gather some trainings I just need here and there to make myself better for the vision and the future God has given me. That's not my vision. Going to school is not my vision. Getting a PhD is not my vision. Becoming a professor is not my vision. All that is just vehicles. All that is just the trainings and the equipments I need to fulfill my vision. When a man sees this thing, sleep becomes so costly. Sleep becomes too... It becomes too much of luxury. You can't afford it. There's something that makes a man seize food. So I stay and eat. He says, keep your food. When I have time for that, I will eat it. That thing is called the big picture. When you see it, when a man finds it, he go it away and he sell it every other thing and then he comes back to buy it, to buy it, to buy it, to buy it. That's now the man who can endure affliction, who can endure persecution, who can endure trials and temptation, who can endure all kinds of affliction. He can even endure being disowned. He can endure being abandoned. He doesn't care. All he cares about is that thing. Vision will alter your life. It will make you something that people cannot understand. Look, if the world can explain you, you're not going far. If the world can... Yes, that's the truth. If the world can explain you, you're not going far. Can you explain Dangote? Can you explain Bill Gates? Let's try to explain them. If the world can put you together, you are going nowhere. You're not going far. Mysterious people are people of vision. They are mysterious. They are a mystery to their generation. Vision makes you abnormal. We can, you can't be normal carrying a vision. The world sees a normal you. They can predict you. They can tell of your next move. They can tell of your next action. You're just going, maybe where you're going to is a Zambo here. Just one stone throw you're doing. You're just tricking. And then the seven, see how God stopped the walk. <laughs> and then Satan landed it. He said, hey, wow. Okay, that's what I'm going to be doing from henceforth. In your way, you see people coming together to build any great dynasty, any great walk. I will do the same thing God did to stop them. Well, 
I won't talk today about why God stopped this work. Because actually ambition goes like this. It's called I. It can be using maybe principles of vision to build your ambition. God will frustrate it. Ambition goes like this. But vision goes like this. Ambition is building your own self. But vision is building people. Ambition is you, yourself, and yourself alone. So, God, so this is not what I want. I don't want a monument. I want a movement. It's not supposed to be about you. It's supposed to be about others. That's why true visionaries don't, don't become great alone. They make others great. True visionaries are not seeking how to be great. They're seeking how to make people great. That's what true vision does. True vision is not about making you better. It's about making others better. He said, go to, let us go down and therefore, and there, confound their word language. That thing that makes people agree is what he wants to now touch. That thing that makes people cooperate together is what he wants to now touch. That thing that makes people synergize together is what he wants to touch now. That thing that makes people run with that cause is what he wants to tamper with. That thing that makes people submit to the great picture, submit to that house, that mandate, is what he wants to affect now. That thing you call unity is what he wants to tamper with. So, what does he do? He says, let us confound their language that they may not do what? Understand one another's speech. If you've ever seen me where I'm fighting against this unity, you think I'm a wounded lion. That's when I see two people not able to walk together. This one sees this one pass here. This one sees this one pass here. They don't talk. Hi, hi. And if you see how that thing pains my heart. Why? Because I know people who live like that don't go far. It is confounded language. And once you allow that to settle in your midst, what it does is that it limits you from, from going far. He said, let's go and scatter their language. They have one language. Let us confuse their language. So that if this one say, come, what you'll be hearing is go. If this one say, let us go, what you'll be hearing is, let us uh, scatter. If, it's, if one is a let us unite, you'll be hearing, let us disintegrate. They will never be able to agree. They will hate each other. They won't love themselves. They will disunite. They will not believe in each other. Once you bring all that, bringing gossip, bringing slander, bringing murmuring, bringing criticism, then you will stop that big work. Now what happens when you stop that big work? You stop everybody. You know, I see people who, <laughs> I know the story of a great ministry that used to be in the South East before. You, maybe you've heard about the ministry, Zoe Ministry. Great mandate. Great church. With great men. What stopped that work from going far? All the Christ embassy you see is nowhere was nowhere close to what the way ministry was doing. That's the ministry where people were using convoys to do ministry. They, you see how they were jamming stadiums full. They were doing all kinds of exploits around the world. But when some of these things are confound languages began to enter, the sons of that ministry used their own hand to destroy what God was using their father to build. The question now is, they have stopped the work. Where are the sons? They have succeeded in destroying the work, but where are they now? Where are they? I had a crusade in one of the cities in the state here. A program. In one of the programs, one guy walked in, looking so worn out, tata, looking like a madman. I took note of him, but I didn't even... On the Sunday, the last day of the program, he came and knelt down where I was. I could perceive alcohol, perceive cigarette. And then he told me, he said, sir, uh, 
I thank God for you that that I actually heard about your coming. I had to trek a lot of distance to be part of this program with this my child. I'm going back and I don't have transport money. I just came to meet you to help me. He said, please oh, keep what you're doing up because I wish I had, I, I knew what I, you know, I wish I knew these things early enough. He said, I used to be one of the mighty men of Awuzie. I used to be one of the mighty men, one of the sons of Zoe ministry. He said, we started that work. You see, so along the line, I don't know what happened. Pride, disobedience, rebellion, disloyalty came in, and then we we just began to misbehave, and then we disintegrated. He said, and now today, he said, none of us, he said, most of us have been died. He said, I'm back to the village. You see, the Christ embassies, the DCs, and the rest of them, who were nowhere to be found when those men were pulling weight. The sons of this ministry, you see, were the people who used to go for the crusade of these guys, and they would be envying these people. They would see those sons of the way those days doing this thing, they would be envying them. They're like, hey, when would we reach here? But they didn't know. Now, when your language is confounded, you will stop a great work and a great destiny God is giving you. <clears throat> so the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth and left off to build the city. Therefore, is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of the whole earth. So, now let me show you, you know, this thing. Um, Proverbs. Proverbs twenty nine verse eight. Verse 18, rather. Proverbs 29, verse 18. Show it. Where there is no vision, the people do what? Perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. You see? Where there is no vision, people perish. So that establishes everything. Where there is no vision, the people do what? Perish. So what makes people great? Vision. What makes people successful? Vision. What makes people powerful? Vision. What makes people go far? Vision. Where there is now no vision, the people will perish. So anytime God gives a vision to people, they should rejoice because their future is now secured. That's why you see, I pray that prayer every time I pray. Lord, thank you for giving me a great house like this to be part of. Thank you for the gift of pristine use. Thank you for the gift of this vision. Thank you for the gift because you don't know what it is when God gives you a vision. You don't know what it is when God decides to give people vision. What it means is that God is about to move them out of obscurity. Move them out of complacency. Move them out of smallness and move them into a realm of greatness. Hmm. Why I can I can say this and say it again and again. Now, one of the signs of stupidity and foolishness is to be in a vision and abuse it. Because you don't understand anything. You know, it's like being in an aircraft that is taking you to the war. And then what you're doing is fighting the pilot or you're puncturing every side of the aircraft. In the aircraft, you see there are rules. Fasten your seatbelt. You see things like uh, off your phone and all that. So you are in an aircraft and all you're doing is maybe you sat down and then you use razor and cut the seatbelt. Say, I don't need this thing. What is even in here? This rope that they carry and put. You cut it and throw it away. And say, I'm fine like this. Don't worry. Don't worry. 
And maybe along the corner you say, why is this window even closed? Why are they, you just look for one piece or hammer or whatever and then break the window. And I don't know why they want to allow somebody to have fresh air. It's natural air here. We are just under this AC. Let's have fresh air. Break it. Don't worry. You have broken a major principle that governs that aircraft. You are going to perish with it. You, you yourself, you'll be the first to go. You will come into a house and they are abusing the opportunity God gave them. They should be loyal, they should be thankful to God. What one sign of a man who is wise in the vision is he's thankful to God for being in that house. He's thankful to God. Father, thank you for ordering my feet. Thank you for giving me an umbrella like this. Thank you for giving me a mandate, a commission like this. Me who would have been a nobody. Thank you, Lord. So I now have what it takes. I now have opportunity to go all over the world. And I have opportunity to be a man who is relevant, contributing to my society and my generation. I can now be a voice that people can hear. Thank you, Lord. I don't take it for granted. It's one of my greatest joy that I can live to fulfill God's vision for my life. It's one of my greatest gratitude. I don't take it for granted. I don't take it for granted. Any man you see who plays around with vision is a fool. It's in a Monday, the house like this, yet he's playing around, jumping around. That's a big idiot. It's a big fool going nowhere. Quote me. Because he thinks it's just one house. He doesn't he can't see beyond. He thinks it's where we gather to just preach, hear the word, the word, pray and go home. He has not seen anything. He has not seen that vision can bring him before governors before presidents can bring him before mighty men you should be thankful to God where there is no vision the people perish where there is no vision the people perish this year we have declared it a year of visions. What it means is that you have to now begin to learn the dynamics of vision. You have to begin to learn what it takes to fulfill a great vision. You have to begin to learn what it takes to, you know, be a great man. It's not going to be a year for jumping up and down. Anybody who doesn't want to sit down obediently, who thinks he has his activity and itineraries and all that, is wasting his time here. You're not going to be able to fit in this year because there are a lot of things that we're going to be doing this year. This year is only for people who will cooperate. It's not here for anybody. It's not here for everybody. People who will be taking off in the wrong direction. My team, my team. They should be taking off. They will see how far they will go. Let's see how far you will go. Except what you, you know, some of you, what you call greatness is that somebody has a car. Sorry for you. Sorry for you. Yahoo boys are driving cars. There are, there are some slay girls, slay mamas in town that their sugar daddies are buying cars. If you want to use that as a parameter for success, you are a fool. You are just thinking small. You don't know what success is. You don't know what greatness is. Civil servants can buy a car with their salary. Are they great? Do you know how greatness is? Anybody can buy a land and build a house and live in it. And you think that is that greatness? Do you know how greatness is? If that's what I wanted in life, I would not be doing what I'm doing. If car is what I want, there's a better way. It's just to get a job now. Work, they pay me good salary. I can buy a car. So if you think I'm in this for car, then you have not seen for cars will come, even the ones that in their hundreds they will line up. But that is not what I'm seeing. Something big I'm seeing. I'm seeing the nations. I'm 
seen solution coming out of this house, out of this mountain, for different sectors of our society, different sector of the world. That's what I see. Because that's what vision is all about. Vision is about providing solutions for the problems of humanity. Vision is about taking people from where they are to where they ought to be. That's vision. And in doing that, you become a great person. Please, can you show them Isaiah chapter 61? A little on that. We're going to show you. You, you, you need to have a change in paradigm. A shift in paradigm. See what vision does to people. Why you need to understand where you are. Why you need to understand the man God has given you. Why you need to understand the mandate where you find yourself in. Why you need to come into agreement. Come into perfect alignment. And run with the vision that God has given you here. It is not for me. It is for you, sir. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor, to the meek. He has sent me. Now this is where I want to begin. He has sent me. Hello. Hello. Can I shock you? In building visions, God calls a man. Actually, the first principle of building a vision I'm going to show you here. You know, I'm talking to you about how to build a great vision. And I'm going to get there soon. It's called the principle of headship. You know, or what you call the principle of exclusivity. Vision does not start with let us. Vision starts with a man. Let us is the second principle, which I'm going to show you. It's called the principle of eldership, or the principle of plurality, or the principle of sonship. The principle of eldership, or the principle of plurality. We will hear that one, not today. I'll deal with the first one today. Now, let me even start talking on the principle of headship. Then I'll be talking on some other general issues that deal with vision. When God wants to change people's destiny, when God wants to deliver people, when God wants to set people free, when God wants to take people far, all he does is to appear to a man. What he does is to send a man. Vision starts with headship. That's what you call exclusivity. It starts with one man. God will first of all be the person to communicate to somebody they need to build something that would help or save people, help save people, that will help deliver people, that will help change and better the lot of people. So look at it in Isaiah. The guy is saying that the spirit of the Lord is upon him. For the Lord has anointed him to preach the good news to the meek. He now says, the Lord has sent me. He said, he has sent me, not sent us. He sent me. And I want to let you know it. God sent me for you. That's why you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't make that mistake of trying to fight the man God has sent, you will lose your life. You will lose your destiny. You can't be equalizing with me. You can't be comparing yourself with me. You can't be contesting with me. I'm like DHL. Sent with your parcel. Why will you be fighting with me when I'm carrying your parcel? You fight me, will you gain the pastor? You won't gain it. Will you get it? You won't get it. He said, He has sent me to do what? <laughs> to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Are you seeing what vision does? And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Are you seeing what vision does? To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. 
to comfort all that mourn. Are you seeing vision? And all this thing is one man. Who is going to do this for a whole people? He said, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes. Some of you came here with ash clothes, ashes. You came here with anguish. You came here confused. You came here. Some of you met me with not no direction for your life, no purpose. Give them beauty. That thing that Pastor Chris gave to Sinach is beauty for ashes. That thing Pastor Chris gave to Reverend Tom is beauty for ashes. That thing that Bishop. David or Edible, give to Abioye. Abioye came into Winners Chapel, a mechanic, and has ended up a bishop and the second in command in that great ministry. He is flying to nations in private jet. That thing he gave him is what you call beautiful ashes. Vision is one of the most powerful things that I can have ever seen alter the destiny of people. It can take nobodies and make them somebodies if they are willing to submit and be obedient and faithful. It can take hopeless people and put hope back in their life. Those of you who are here, why not go back and do a review of how you used to be before you came here? Then you will now see that vision has that power, has that capacity. Just these little ones that some of you know now. Maybe how to pray. Maybe how to read the word. Maybe how to even talk. Maybe how to even communicate some things. Just that little one alone. Use it to experiment. And to check. What vision has the ability of doing? You think you were born the way you were? He said, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise or the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called what? Now look at it. See all these broken people who came under the man who is sent. You are not the one who was sent. I'm the one who is sent. I don't know why you are acting like they sent you. Or you are acting like they called you. That's why there's so much of breakaway and division in the body of Christ in these last days. Because everybody is sent now. Look at the whole three million people that God said go and bring out of Egypt. It's only one man they sent. Just one man. Just one man. All this uh, duplicity or duplications of visions here, here, here and there is just confusion. It's just not knowing how God builds. God doesn't need ten men to change the city. He just calls one man, then he rallies. When we get to the second part, you will now see how the thing progresses. Vision starts with the principle of headship. God calls one man, one man. He doesn't call any vision where you see that there's you hear people saying that nobody is the founder, run away from it. Even in the Trinity, there's headship. There's always a set man in every vision. Any vision where there's no set man, where they appoint their leader, maybe they choose, okay, let's elect our general here. Watch, people's destiny will be usually be hampered in that place. Because when God wants to speak, he's a God of order. That's why this year is a year of what? Vision and divine order. He's a God of order. He does not talk anyhow. When I read for that, you will now see. I'm going to show you some other scripture to establish this doctrine of headship. Even God has it. When God spoke in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, he said, let us. It was God who said, let us. It was not let us that said, let us. God said to the other guys, the other trinity, let us make man in our image and likeness and let them have dominion. It is a headship principle. You must understand it. There's God the Father. There's God the Son. 
Then there's God, the Holy Spirit. God the Father takes the position of headship. But God the Son takes the position of eldership. He takes the position of plurality. He takes the position of, you know, that's the thing. God is the head, but now the elders are the neck, the shoulders. God is the visionary. Headship is about visionary. But eldership is about vision bearing. It's about shouldering the vision. It's about coming together as a team now to help the head carry what God has given him. The ability to see resides in the eyes and the eyes are in the head. The eyes situate within the head, not the neck. The neck is not giving the power to see, it's the head. That's why your two eyes are within your head. But the job of the neck now, the shoulder, which is the eldership, is to help the head bear. Is to help that head carry what? That's why the head, the vision, rests on the shoulders of the elders. Elders there talk about the team. Of, we'll talk about eldership, not now. I want to establish the issue of headship first of all. If you understand the principles and how they are laid out, nobody is going to be confused about what we are doing here. You won't be struggling for title, for uh, position, and all that nonsense. You will find where you are fitting there and play your role. Everybody is not called into headship. Only one person is called into headship per time. That's why you have one head. But you now see the, the, the function of one head. It has a function of vision, of seeing. His job is to provide direction. That's why the eyes are dear. He provides direction by vision, by seeing. And then uh, you, you check again your head. One of the things you have is the mouth. Communication It's called vision casting. So vision catching is with the eyes. But there's vision casting. Ability to now take that vision and communicate it to people. And get people to rally around that vision. To pursue what God has for their life. That's vision casting. Communicating the vision. Do you see the ear? Who hears from God? Is the head. That's why God, you see in other scriptures I show you, God does not appear to people. He doesn't talk to people. When he wants to talk to Moses, he comes to Moses and says, meet me at the mountain. Let the people wait there so I can talk to you about the plan I have for their life. If God will have to talk to everybody, everybody will hear different things. So, so there will be order and divine government divine order he will talk to one person and then move everybody to follow that one person you see i've dealt with the eyes i've dealt with the mouth i've dealt with the ear now so the visionaries hear from god hmm. and all these things are within the headship the head is not the one to do the job his job is to provide a vision. His job is to provide a direction. His job is to hear what God is saying and then say to the people. That's communication. His job is not to run with the vision. Habakkuk 2 2. I will stand on my watch and I will watch to see what he will say. So the eyes here does the job of seeing, the ear does the job of hearing. But all of them are within the head. And he will say to me, write the vision, make it play. So that he that reads will run with it. So they are runners. The head does not run with the vision. Because the vision is not for him. The vision is for the people. The head is like a messenger. His job is to deliver people's parcel. His job is not to consume the parcel. His job is not to use the parcel. His job is to provide the parcel for the people. Your own is to unravel the parcel and then use it. I'm like a mailman. My job is to bring your letter. Your job is to read it and roll with the instruction inside. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? That's why if you read the scripture, you see, to the angel of the church, read the Revelation. In wherever, is it right? When God writes a letter, he gives it to me to give to you.
And when he, he, he said, to the angel of the church of what? Ephesus. To the angel of the church of what? Master, to the angel of the church of what? He mentioned different churches. He didn't just say to the angel. He said to the angel of the church. That is, God writes a vision, but he gives it to the angel to communicate to the people. The letter is not for the angel. The letter is only given to the angel for the people. For the church. I'm, t- I'm trying to organize myself here because I'm really diagram going. I want to stay on one thing. Headship. Headship. Go back to Isaiah chapter whatever. What can happen to you if you understand this thing? Drop down your ambition this year. Drop down your stupid goal this year. It won't take you anywhere. And embrace God's vision. He's not an author of confusion. God said to me, God said to me, God said to me, is God a confused man being? So it's a parrot that talks anyhow. That's why people are carrying great abilities and dying too small. Because they don't know how God builds. They don't know how God builds. They don't know how God builds. Even in the Trinity, there's order. You see, there's headship. God the Father. God the Son. God the Holy Spirit. Let me establish headship principle. (laughs) You see, in the home, there's headship. The man is the head of the house. Okay. Let me finish this scripture. I'll get to that part of it. To appoint unto them that morning. I think I read that one. Okay. Uh, he said, okay, they might be called trees, that they might be called trees of righteousness. Trees. Not seeds. Trees. Because the seed is the head. You become trees of righteousness. Trees. When you plant the seed, what happens to that seed? It becomes a tree. When it becomes a tree, what happens? It gives birth to what? Fruit. Once you have fruit, you cannot have trees. It takes a seed to produce a tree. It takes a tree to produce fruits. It takes fruits to produce trees. So when a man has been given a vision and people come into agreement with him, give them time. They become trees. What started as a seed becomes a tree that gives birth to fruits. And those fruits have potentials of also becoming trees. Because inside the fruit contain their own seed. It's, it's amazing how this thing works. You plant maybe an apple seed, one seed only, or an orange seed, one seed only. The seed dies and then becomes a tree. It's just like one seed. That's me. One seed. One. But you see inside this me, there are many me. Many me inside. But one seed dies. They gives birth to a tree. After a while, that same seed inside, out of the tree, comes out fruit, orange fruit. Is shocking. You go and bring out one fruit, peel it, one orange, peel it, and squeeze the water out. You will see that there are more than one seed inside that tree, that fruit. Hmm. But it was one seed that died. How did he replicate? You see the shocking thing. You can count the number of seeds inside a fruit, but you can't count the number of fruit inside a seed. If you see this seed that is standing here before you, millions that can come out of him, sons that can, if you only understand it. Let the dimension of me that is you not die inside of me.
Let the dimension of me that you are meant to manifest not die inside of me. Because when God calls a man, it's not for himself. It's for trees. He has sent me. When I begin to do it, some of you come in here broken hearted. So me, let's fix your life back. Because you can't carry rejection and become a hero. You can't carry rejection and change the world. Some of you came in here with garments of ashes. So me, let's remove that mental slavery you're carrying and give you real beauty. You see, ashes. Some of you came here with character flaws, with moral issues. You came here with all kinds of, you know, life that is bent, 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 and all that. That's ashes. Let's remove it and give you real beauty that is intangible. Some of you came here with sickness of the soul, untrustworthiness. Some of you came here all kinds of lifestyle. So meet yourself. Let us clean you up. Let us take care of your bended life. Let's take care of that your life of indiscipline. Let's do some of those work we need to do to get you in order. You came in with undisciplined life. Let's get your life in order. When we have achieved that, what now happens is that you begin to become trees. Is it they become trees of righteousness? And I'll say the planting of the Lord that He might be glorified. The planting of the Lord. You become oak trees, mahogany, iroquois. Now he might be glorified. And then what will happen to those guys now? He said, these same people who came in broken, these same people who came in confused, these same people who came in with ashes, these same people who came in mourning, these same people who came in devastated, when they now become trees and the planting of the Lord, the same people, they shall build the old wastes. The same people, they shall raise up the former desolations. The same people, they shall repair the waste cities. The same people, the desolations of many generations. Go to the next verse. What will now happen when these guys begin to do that? You see, the process. The first is that God sends a man. When the man is sent, he is sent to people. God doesn't send man to good people. He doesn't, vision is not for good people. Vision is for people who have lost direction, for hopeless people, for broken yeah. <laughs> For people who have no direction, no meaning, no future, people who are heading nowhere. Vision is not for good people, my friend. And if you understand it, you go anywhere to go and do ministry this year. You will begin to see that way that a court leader can be the greatest man of God God can ever use. Vision are for Israelites locked up in Egypt. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying here? Yeah. So when God sends that man, and the people are taught how to come into into agreement, accept that man, and begin to the man begins to provide vision, shows them that look, this your present you is not the real you. You may be a court boy now, but see you are an evangelist to the world. You may be a poor person now, but you are a global entrepreneur. You may be a prostitute now. You may be doing all kinds of nonsense, but we see a root coming out of you. You may be a nobody as a lady, but we see an Esther coming out of your loins. Which people are able to be shown a preferable future? That's what you should do this year as source. Go and show people who they can be. When you go back to your cities to do ministry, stop talking cock and bush story. This year, what you should do is see people the way they are, but don't end up there. Show them who they can become. When you show people their end result, they will follow you. They can do anything to get there. Show them that the current them is not who they are. It doesn't matter what they are going through. They may have ashes in their life. They may be broke now. He said, he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. <laughs> Tell them that where you are now is not, the, it's not where you are ending. You could be poor. You could be broke. You could be whatever. You could be homeless. You could have no house. You could have no car now. You could be trekking. But if you are faithful to follow, if you are faithful to understand that what God called me to do in your life is to provide you with vision that will alter your destiny, that will take you to a preferable future if you understand it. All it will take is just a little time. You will get there. So see the first thing there. That 
calling. That headship thing. That call that God gives a man. And he takes it to those people who need it. And then begins to work on them. Begins to work on them. Begins to clean them up. Begins to deal with rejection. Low self-esteem. Um, poverty of the spirit. Poverty of the mind. And all those kind of problems. When he is done doing that. That's what you call discipleship. The first side deals with discovering the people. The second side deals with discipling them. Training the people. Then in, after doing that, establishing all those ordinances and establishing some of those major important things you should. After that, the next thing now is to, you see, they become trees. That's discipleship. It's discipleship that raises trees out of fruits. What it takes to give birth to a fruit is just birth. Because fruit is children. Is the fruit is a product of intercourse between the seed and the tree. The seed is the head, the father, but the tree is the wife, the son. Wife is not gender, it's not woman. Wife is son. The position a woman takes before a man is the position the neck, the elders take to a visionary. Wife is a oh, helpmate, helper of a vision, is what you call wife. It's not somebody who uh, is not a gender, it's not a female, it's not, that's what it is. Wife is a helper of a vision. So when you hear of sons, all these elders coming together with a man, that thing you see between a head and then the elders is actually a marriage. Covenant is marriage, is intercourse. Because to give birth, you need the marriage of the visionaire and the vision bearers. That agreement, that infusion that comes between them is what now gives birth to great things. It's what now gives birth to fruits. For instance, what God did with Jesus, you see Jesus as he is a man, but he was actually the wife of God. Because son is wife. You see that sun and the moon. Moon is the wife of the sun. That relationship between them that gives birth to stars. So the first order is that phase of discovery, but not just there. The next order is a phase of discipleship. Then after that happens, you now see they become trees. Trees. They begin to give birth to fruits. A tree comes out of a seed. And then it gives birth to fruit. But inside the fruit, other trees begin to rise up. The wind they have been established because the word tree there now means firm man. A man who has become a firm. He's not just a fruit again. It's not a tree giving birth to fruit. And God cannot use fruits. He uses trees. That's why if you are in this vision and you are not yet processed, you are just a fruit, you, you need to go through some training, discipleship that will turn you from that fruit thing to, into a tree. So you'll be able to give birth to fruit yourself. You will end up a fruit. Any mango fruit that is plugged and eaten forever has lost the ability to produce trees. Where any fruit you plug, okay, even if you eat the fruit and then you collect the seed and plant it again, you have reproduced that. You eat the fruit, eat the seed, it's lost forever, it won't come back. What God wants to do with you is to put you through a process that would take you from fruit dimension into three dimension. In this vision, you become solid, thick oak tree, like Iroko. They don't need to be, they don't need water to survive weather. 
in Hamatan, Iroko has enough water inside to supply itself. Oak trees, they, they still remain green. They, don't, they, they grow so tall and stand there. Then what happens is that they, they produce this great kind of shelter that people can come and do meetings under them. Human beings can come and take shelter. Whom, uh, birds can build their nests. Have you not seen Iroko trees? Have you not seen oak trees? All those mahogany trees. They are usually the ones in the middle of the village square. Then you see people, age grade, will come there to take this thing. People come there to sell market square. They, they use those trees for all kinds of stuff. You see birds, they will build their nests. Sometimes you see thousands of nests hanging around those trees. That's what God wants you to be. He said, when they have become trees, what will they now do? He said, they will rebuild ancient cities. They would restore the desolation of generations and all that. But he doesn't end here. When they have started doing this work, because they have become tree, the purpose of being a tree is not to be whatever, one tree. No tree exists to be a tree for itself. When you have trees, people can take shelter under trees. When you have trees, people can get timber out of trees. When you have trees, you can get fruit out of trees. When you have trees, you can get even, you know, shelter, like I mentioned. Birds can build their nets there. You can get timber out of it. People can even get firewood out of trees. People can get furniture out of trees. So when you become one and begin to deploy your ministry, deploy, you know, deploy your abilities. Because that's what vision does to you. It brings you in the way you are, but doesn't leave you the way you are. It processes you so you can be a tree, a mighty tree. That's why it doesn't matter who comes under me. If you are obedient, if you are willing, if you sit down, if you submit, you will be something that if you look at it, you'll be shocked. How did I become this? It's simple now. Is input, process, output. It works. Input, process, output. Is a simple technique. Simple technique. It works. That's why I believe in everybody. That's why I don't need to know. I don't need to see anything in you to even use you. All I need to see is your obedience and willingness. That's all I need. Are you willing to follow? Are you obedient? Are you willingness? I don't need your talents. I'm a master craft. I'm a master builder. I can build you into anything. Nobody follows me in obedience and humility. Who follows my instruction the way I said, except you are doing your own thing. When I tell you to do it, you do it the way you want to do Not this year, sir. If you follow me the way I tell you to follow me, whether it's favorable or not, I'm the one who knows what I'm doing. You don't need to know how I'm doing it. If you follow me the way I tell you to follow me, Give me only few years. You see this new decade? Few years only. If you do what a doctor says you should do, doesn't matter how sick you are, follow the prescription, you will get healed. But go and be doing it the way you want. Where they say you should take your injection in the morning, go and take it the following day. Say you should take your drugs, two, two dose. Say this doctor is wasting my time. Go and take it, five, five dose. Don't worry. Same drug that should be healing you can kill you. Can kill you. Mary said to the disciples, whatever he says you should do. Because <laughs> the miracle is in the doing, it's not in the knowing. It's in the doing. This year is for obedient people, it's not for knowledgeable people. That's why it's called the year of visions and what? divine order. No room for breaking of ranks this year. You don't do the things you do last year in this year and think you'll get a different result. You'll get the same result. Is a year for three o'clock should be three o'clock. Is a year for five o'clock should be five o'clock. If you're serious with your destiny, it's not a year for hanky-panky. Whether you like it or not, a guy who attends his lectures regularly will do better. 
and somebody who misses his lectures, no matter how you read, because there's something about that classroom work. So no matter how you miss, you know, services, miss my trainings, and you're still here, the guy who attends all oh, and on time, after a while, will do better than you. And the guy who takes my tapes and go and soak it, the guy who takes my books and go and read it, he will do better and achieve much more than somebody who just wants to come for Sunday service and go home. The difference will be clear. To be clear. This year you will see that our ministry is not just going to be about come, sit down, teach, and all that. It's going to be really structured. Everything we do. We've been doing exam, assessment, and all that. Some of our, yes, we'll do some kind of, their trainings we'll do. you miss one session, you can't even continue again. You can't catch up because it's going to be a layer upon layer, line upon line thing. One will lead to the other, the other will lead to the other. So, you know, there are some kind of lectures where you miss. There's no need attending other lectures again. It's, it's obvious you've missed it. Everything is connected. There's a way the thing connects. It's the way it connects. You just know what's the point. That's what we'll do to you guys this year. So you need to rise up and become trees. <sighs> Go to verse 5. Quickly. See what happens to them. He said, And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. And the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your wine dressers. This one now is talking about what happens to the trees. Strangers begin to come to feed their flocks. This is where you begin to have the goodies. The greatness begins to show. The money begins to come. The success begins to come. The influence and the affluence begin to come. That is what he's talking about. He said, and the sons of the alien, that's foreigners, shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. Or your vine dressers, rather. Verse 6. But you shall be named the priests of the Lord. These are people who came in mourning. These are people who came in dejected and rejected. These are people who came in as orphans. These are people who came in broken hearted. Some people who came in confused without direction. Look at who they are now. But you shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory shall be, shall ye boast yourselves. Nobody see their end because of what? Vision. Nobodies who were picked, trikers who were picked, keke guys who were picked, see their future if they go through process. Vision can alter your life. Some people are struggling with it. I look at it and say, Well, do they even know who I am? Blind human beings. Do you know what I'm called to do? Blind human beings. You think I'll come and beg them? You have not seen. That's why you are behaving in your He said, for your shame, you have double. You shall have double. Please, we have not changed the scripture. It's the same as that 61 we are reading. Go and read and see how it started. The, the way God described this people. The way they were when they met that man who was sent. He said, for the Lord has sent me. You see what he did with these people. And now see how they are ending up. Either for your shame, that initial shame, one one cloth, nothing to eat, nothing. You see, this is New Year Day. You think you should be running around town? Think you should be somewhere eating? You've not seen how you can celebrate New Year in Dubai. You've not seen how you can celebrate New Year in Bangkok, in Paris. You've not seen how you can celebrate New Year in New York. You've not seen it. If you see it, this one is nothing to, to you. 
How many rice will you eat to be a great man? How many meat will you eat to be a great man? If you see it, you would give up this nonsense ceremony and celebration and festivity people are making out of out of their poverty. This is New Year. I have not eaten New Year rice. Look at you going nowhere. not drank my new year mineral. Look at you going nowhere. For your sin, you have double. You shall receive double. And for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess their double. That your territory of ministry. See what is waiting for you. Is the everlasting joy shall be unto them. The next verse. Okay, for I the Lord love judgment. Okay, let's leave this one. You know. He's just showing you what happens to people. Okay. Let me read. And their, this verse nine. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord had blessed. See what vision can do. <clears throat> That's the awesome power of vision. That's the awesome power of vision. If you don't make up your mind this year that you're going to run with this vision, sorry, sir. I don't know how else to help you. I really do not know how else to help you. I really do not know how else to help you. If you want jamboree, if you want whatever, I really don't know how to help you. This is a year of visions. This is a year to do whatever you are asked to do. This is a year to submit. This is a year to be obedient. This is a year to do what you are asked to do. This is a year to be serious. This is a year for divine order. This is a year to find your place in this umbrella. Find your place in this big mandate and begin to chart your course. long, before long it will be clear to everyone both those who believe and those who didn't believe what God has done with us before long it will be clear all eyes will see it, all ears will hear it and all nations feel the impact before long if you willing and obedient this year you have no other option than to eat the good of the land. I'm going to lead you to pray in a few minutes. Then we'll come back, you know, for the next. Because I'm going to, I'm not yet done with the headship thing. You know. I want to just deal on headship today. Then we can get into the issue of other ones subsequently. Start your feet and talk to God. First of all, thank God for bringing you into this vision. What you are capable of being here, if you follow, if you submit... Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man what you have for following. I want you to open your mouth, thank the Lord, and then. If there are many churches you can go to and then feel whatever, I mean, church is church. But there are other churches you go to, you know, this is not church. You are in a vision. This time is one of such places. There are some ministries running TV station more excellent than even the way government is running. TBN is one of them. CBN is one of them. That's why this year we in my commitment is vision. When you see vision for what it really is, you will now begin to take it serious. You now begin to know that okay, so what we are building here is not just gather church. We are building something that will pay us for life, that will make you great. You don't need a job. This is your job. It can pay you for life. It can give you wealth for life. 
that's the dimension I want you to begin to see now. Because when you see church as a uh, church is something you you attend church when you have done the real thing, you just attend church, you come and hear the word and go. You will never see that you are constructing something beyond church. I want to now show you the kingdom side of church, which is that treasure hidden in the field. When you find it, you will sell every other thing else. We don't want church keyboards. Our keyboards will buy estates. That's that's when you begin to see the dimension of church that is visionary. We don't want church drummers or church bassists. We don't want church singers. We don't want that. There are many church singers. They can come to church when they want. We want people who know that before the church door opens, they should be in church. People who know that it is supposed to be a duty for them to train themselves, work on themselves. Not because they are working to be church people. They are working because they are in a vision. Where there is true vision, there is no lack of provision. Yeah, yes. When people are doing things and struggling, is where they have not learned that dimension of ministry and his vision. If pastoring for me was an adopted, I would have been doing another job somewhere than pastoring. But I'm fully resigning to this. Why? Because this is my main job. Then I'm training myself to be multi-diversified. So that I will not just end up a local champion, a local pastor who only knows how to preach Abraham, who knows how to preach David killed Goliath, who knows how to preach all those things. I have to be the kind of pastor that is a visionary, not a pastor of like any other pastor. pastor who is a diplomat, a pastor who is a management consultant, a pastor who is a, an executive director, a pastor who is all kinds of things. That's why I go the extra mile to get the kind of trainings I get. It costs me a lot when I go for them. I pay the price for the anointing. Pay the price for the supernatural. I have all that, but beyond all that, I also pay the price for wisdom. I pay the price to be a solution provider to all centers of society. Because I know it's a vision. You can't be just a pastor and expect to succeed in this age. There are many things you must be to carry kingdom wealth as a minister. you're a music minister and you cannot grow yourself to a point where you can compete with people who compete at Project Fame at Nigerian Idol, American God Talent you are wasting your time, you're just a church player you're just a church singer, you don't know what you're doing you can't build yourself to that point where you become <laughs> what will you do with the millions of young people in this country who are driving towards entertainment as a music minister you just you're missing your key at this age missing your your part at this age you're just a church person but if you train yourself in that dimension and capacity of vision you can be the one to sponsor the next nigerian god's talent and you're a church person but you package nigerian god talent and deliver it for a boy state deliver southeast god talent a boy state god talent and you will you will do it so professionally the same way if have you seen the excellence in bb niger apart from the nudity the immorality but you see how clean those flatmates or not the 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 buildings are you you look at the corridors they are fine the way they are arranging you see all those sessions where they do you know where the house captains or what they call them house whatever leader you go to talk with be the big brother you know and then they ask questions you see all those techniques all those things they do you know maybe who is going to open the right cup to find the right whatever all the, i see it and i see this yeah apart from the pollution in the industry apart from the corruption in the industry who gave these guys this kind of wisdom and brain and sense to be able to do this what is wrong with church people Watch those are eviction nights, the things they use as benchmark to evict housemates and all that. When will you start thinking like that? When will you package 
Nigerian got I got talent. A boy idol. When will you package it? Southeast idol. A why? Go and learn what he knows. How is he able to package that is comedy? A why comedies? How does it? How do they do it? How do they do ticketing? How do they ticket? What is VIP? What is VIP? What is early bed? Do you know what early bed is? Early bed registration, all those stuff. How do they do it? Let it. I just started a football institute. I called it Lovers of Soccer. Lovers of Soccer Networks, mm, something like that. Lovers of uh, Lovers of Soccer Network, Lawson, something like that. And then what I want to use it to do is to reach the sports world. And then I don't need to call it church. It's a church. Oh? Lovers of Soccer. I will reach more of the people in the soccer world. Gather them would you know people who love soccer? Let's come together and see how we can. I just cast the vision. How do they do Niger bet? You need to have that side of vision now that is visionary. That side of meaning. How do they do it? Don't be don't be obscure in a world that is you're living in a real world, and yet you're living in this real world as though you are in a, in, in a celestial world. do they train bankers how do they train all these entrepreneurs marketplace people you are a pastor you are a christian if you don't know it because you're going to pastor people like that you just want to be who a pastor you're joking you just want when you play drum you're playing like a church drummer you play keyboard like a church keyboard you sing like a church kid where will you learn the other side that tiwa savage knows Tiwas which comes on the stage. There is an art. You're not coming there to come and do worship. People are coming to see creativity. When you now go for crusade, you can go and do lift up your hands and let's worship the Lord. You can do that one. When you go for idol, God's talent shows. You don't go there to do lift up your hands, let's worship the King of Kings. That's not what you're going to go there to go and do. You're going there to go and do real God talent, real idol, and there's a way to do it. How did they organize one? If you don't go and learn it, as a reason is that you're wasting your time here. How did they organize a talent hunt? How did they do audition? How what are, what are the modalities and procedures for doing audition, music audition? If you don't learn it as a Christian this year, you won't have dominion. You won't have relevance. You won't have it. I am grateful. You know, there are books where you see it. I, I saw a book written by Jimovia recently on Africa, you know, Africa Rising or the Rising Africa. I looked at the book, the that's why I look at I looked at the book, the cover, the the pages and all that. The design that one is not church book professors will read it and the Brunners will read it i'm learning that dimension about to package some of my resources and make it appeal to the intellectual world make it appeal to men of all walks of life So you do ministry and you get bored on the way because you didn't see beyond church you were just looking at the four walls of the church you didn't expose yourself to be the kind of person when you package something event planning for instance now church should be able to plan events for people and a whole ushering can do it just ushering you can do it the people who stand there all these years don't see it but ushering is not the opportunity you can use it to develop and train yourself on how to be an event company 
if they hire you to go and serve in governor's gala night where go, politicians are sitting there doing, will you go there with her tie looking like church people will you go there shake it falling down and all that you think there they will lay hands on people all you know as ushers is how to hold people when they're falling down you will not have kingdom relevance it's all you know all you know is offering box how to carry offering box and collect money all you know is how to hold people when they're falling down you will not go anywhere you don't know the PR dimension of Osho. Public relations side of Osho. You don't know how to plan events. You don't know that dimension of Osho. Let's move from church to vision now. You are doing media in the church. Move that media to multimedia. And let it begin to packet jingles for the government, packet jingles for for the, for 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 the market, for, for business rule, packet jingle for Dangote now. What is shocking is that most of the jingles you see on CNN is church people who are packaging it, but you will never know because it doesn't sound like church. Cobb Hams is a keyboardist in Daystar, but he's a producer. He has produced people like, what do you call them? Even Timaya. He has produced... For the continuation of this message, please play the next track.